Last week, Harpreet uh, has uh, placed a comment for one of my YouTube videos if I could do a video about how to create a spin wheel effect in Articulate Storyline. Now, I didn't want to re-event the wheel, so what I did is I asked Joanne Chen if I could create a video on her spin the wheel interaction. So in this Articulate Storyline tutorial, I will show you how Joanne set up her Articulate uh, spin the wheel effect. Hi, I'm Mark Spermon from Purport Online Learning, where I teach you how you can create e-learning modules yourself with Articulate Storyline. And are you new here? Then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Before I forget, you can find Joanne's uh, spin wheel interaction on the community forum and you can download there a Storyline 360 file so you can uh, use it for your own uh, projects. Uh, and I'll put a link in the comments below uh, to the download. Now let's open Articulate Storyline and see how Joanne set up her spin the wheel interaction. So I opened Joanne's Articulate Storyline file and let's look how she set up the spin the wheel interaction. So uh, let's see what for object she used on her slide. For instance, the first one here is a start button. And if you click this one, uh, a few triggers will uh, you know, be executed. Uh, we'll come back to that later. Now, there's a character with uh, a, a thing that says uh, uh, hit start to spin the wheel. And the uh, uh, balloon is in the image. So if you uh, uncheck this, you see that the balloon is also, uh, will also disappear. Now, here is an oval hotspot. And she did this so you can't click on the, uh, on the dial below. Uh, there's some music that plays uh, when the uh, the spin wheel interaction is pl is played. There's a triangle here to check uh, uh, on which uh, yeah uh, position of the wheel uh, uh, you were you've ended when the dial turned. Here is the dial itself. There's a pasted image, so this image will stay. And this image will rotate because this is the the dial itself. Now, if I uncheck this one and this one, and you'll see this, and there's also uh, here a rectangle, and this rectangle uh, moves with motion pads, and on top uh, for these motion pads, um, there are uh, variables, and we'll come back to this later. Now, let me show you how you can convert something to a dial. So I will. Um, jump to another scene. I've prepared something, for instance, a clock here. So if I want to go uh, convert this one to a dial, I go here to insert. I check dial and I can here say convert to dial and you'll see it's a dial now. now. For instance, I can say 360. So my clock can now uh, Uh, thir uh, dial uh, uh, turns uh, whole on 360 degrees. So this is how you can uh, yeah, create a dial of any object that you want. It can be an image, but it can also be a group of uh, objects. Now let's go back to the uh, slide of Joanne and see how she sets things up with the triggers. So let's select the start button and see which uh, triggers there are on the start button. So if you click start, um, the variable stop will be set to false. The cha the state of over one start uh, is set to disabled. So this button will be will disappear, or uh, will uh, have another uh, have another state. Um, the the wheel variable will set to zero, and the, uh, the uh, rectangle two. This is this variable of this rectangle. Um, so let's click this one again. Will move along motion path three when the user clicks. This one uh, when stop is false. So this means when stop is false, this motion path this one moves a mo uh, uh, along a motion path. And with the motion paths uh, on this object, Joanne created a loop. So 
uh, the rectangle will uh, move up uh, when the motion down completes and it will move down when the motion path up completes and this way you can check uh, yeah, if something is true or do something with variables so let's see which uh, variables they're attached on motion path 2 so you see here move rectangle 2 this is this rectangle along motion path 4 when the animation uh, motion path 3 completes so this means that if it goes uh, down, down and the animation completes it will go up um, uh, until a stop is true but if stop is false th this uh, rectangle will uh, move so there's rec uh, a random number between 40 and 200 to the wheel variable when the animation motion path 3 completes if stop is false and when a motion path 2 uh, uh, along motion path 3 when motion path 4 completes so there is the loop and add a, run, a random number uh, between 40 and 200 to wheel when the motion path line uh, completes and stop is false now let's see when uh, stop is true and how uh, it will continue so there is an audio file uh, on the slide and it has a duration of 5 seconds and when the audio file completes, uh, stop will be set to, uh, to true uh, and the uh, wheel stops uh, spinning. And you see here that the start of one is set to normal when audio completes. Um, the state of character one it will set to review. So let's see which that is. It's character one as a reveal state so here this is once you checks when the wheel is turning and here this is the reveal state with the result variable on it so uh, and the result variable is the number on the wheel and you can see here that it will jump to a specific slide if the result is one two three four five or six um, so you can do something with the corresponding numbers and here also on the audio file you see that the result variable will be set to one when audio completes so when the audio is uh, finished uh, and if the wheel is between uh, this number or this number or this number or this number and this corresponds with the um, places on the uh, yeah on the circle here and that's also for two so there are two uh, two sp places here because the number is here and also here so and it is for number one number two number three number four number five and number six um so yeah let's see when you preview this one how it will work so click on preview this slide and you see that if i hit start the wheel turns for five seconds and uh, my outcome is 6 so here you see that the result is now 6 and I can now click on it and I cannot do this in my preview but if you publish the whole module you will be going now to uh, the page for number 6 so I can show you that uh, let's go to story view it's somewhere here this is for 6 so here you will we will send to the number six so you can here uh, specify content for uh, no, number six there is also a wheel here and the wheel will be set to this number so it is set to um, now the wheel will be, will be set to this when the user clicks on the multiply this on the this button it will be set to the uh, sort of, of initial initial state you will jump back to the first uh, page and you can uh, spin the wheel again so i'll hope that you uh, uh, get some inspiration of this video uh, if you have ideas for new videos place uh, a message in my comments and maybe I'll, your idea will be a video next week um, it, don't forget to see in the comments for uh, the download file of joanne and joanne has also uh, uh, a blog post on a community forum where she explains how she created the DAO and I will reference also there. So have a great day and see you on next video. 
Do you have any questions about embedding your Articulate Storyline course in WordPress or about Articulate Storyline in Common? Then please comment below these videos and I promise to answer it. And if you want to create great engaging yearly in Articulate Storyline, make sure that you get my free step-by-step -step guide on how I create e-learning in Articulate Storyline. And I know for sure that it will help you because it describes my whole process that I use for every e-learning module in Articulate Storyline that I built. And was this video useful to you? Then hit the like button below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos.